Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Mary and I am so excited to start this series today. Actually, I guess I started it in my last video where I talked about money and spending money sustainably and how my budget looks like and you know all this kind of stuff. And in that video I asked you guys if you wanted me to talk more about investments, banks, finance, all of the stuff that seems really, really complex and something that most consumers often don't think too much about. And an overwhelming amount of you guys said yes. So I am going to make a series where we talk about finance and money and investments. And we talk about all of this stuff in a way that is accessible for beginners and people who don't know too much about it. I myself am a beginner and I am learning just as much as you are. So learn with me. I guess I will be prepared for each single video and we will talk about a specific subject. And today we're going to talk about banks and how to find out whether or not your bank is investing all your money in fossil fuels and what you can do about it, what banks are green, what banks are not and what the impact of that is and generally just something about the world of banking seen from a sustainable zero waste point of you. And next time we're going to talk about stocks, so stay tuned for that. I hope that this is something that will be well received, I don't know, <laughs> but I am really really excited to get this started, so let's just do it. Also, just before we get started, because I can never just, you know, straight go into talking, but there are a couple of thoughts that I've had that I also really wanted to share. First of all, as a zero waster, I've been through five years of exploring trash and the impact of trash and plastic and all this kind of stuff. And over these five years, one of the things that I've learned and that I learned luckily rather quickly is that the amount of trash that is in your bin, the physical trash that we can see, accounts for a very, very small part of the overall impact of a product or a service and an aspect of society. And that has never been more true than when it comes to banking because there's so much impact that consumers are never going to see and are never going to know about unless we read reports and you know sit down and find out about this stuff lots of it is quite accessible to the public it's just it takes time and effort to find it you know uh, so i've also made a list down below of different kinds of reports bank lists all that kind of stuff so if you want to explore this field even further you can go and do that with some of these sources that i've linked down below another thought that i had i started a couple of months ago following an instagram account called female invest because not only as a zero waster but also as a woman i think it's really important to educate myself upon these issues because the world of finance is largely dominated by men. Several statistics show that women are much less likely to invest in funds, to invest in stock or to change banks or to generally engage with the world of banking unless they, you know, are occupied within the field. But generally women are much less likely to engage with this stuff and I can definitely see that in my own life and people around me. So this is also going to be like my own way of getting involved and I'll tell you guys about my own actions and what I am going to do and when we come to investments I'm also going to talk about my kind of investments. <sighs> okay now let's just do it. First of all how do banks make money? Well a bank is a company and a business just like many other things and they need to make money and their customers are their clients aka us. We pay certain fees like fees for opening an account or taking a loan, there are deposits and all these kinds of different services we pay small fees to be a part of and then they invest those money. But the money that you put in your bank account are not just put into a vault somewhere, never again to be touched. They are always incorporated into the overall worth of the bank and those money will be put into specific funds, investments and projects that you as a consumer have very, very little power over because it's all something that happens internally within the bank. And as long as you're a customer, you're actually supporting it. This didn't surprise me per se, but it also surprised me a little bit. You feel that not every penny a bank owns go towards paychecks and maintenance of bank buildings. They go towards in investments because if we've learned anything, from billionaires is that you do not really work your way to wealth. And for decades, one of the most profitable fields to invest in has been fossil fuels. I want to go over some of the really bad banks of the world and some of the really good banks of the world, but obviously I cannot include every single bank or every single country. So what I did to find loads of this information is that I went online and I searched for my country or a country and then green bank or then bank fossil fuels. And I tried to find reports, articles, 
sources with the sources and then I just clicked through the sources until I got to the original source and checked it out. That was sort of what I did and you can do that with your country, with your area or with your bank and see what turns up. I'm sorry that I cannot have lists or include everyone in this because in the last video lots of you guys had suggestions for countries I should look into and yeah we just don't have that much time. So I'm going to go over Denmark, Canada, England and the US. The largest American banks, JP Morgan Chase and the Bank of America are leading the financing of deep water oil and gas projects to extract fossil fuels. JP Morgan Chase has provided 75 billion to companies expanding fracking and Arctic oil extractions. The New York Bank is one of the 33 big financial institutions that provided $1.9 trillion to the fossil fuel sector between 2016 and 2018. Figures show fracking has been the focus of the intense financing with Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase and the Bank of America, providing about $80 billion over three years, much of it linked to the Permian Basin in Texas. Canada. The financing of the tar sands crude oil projects in Alberta and Canada is dominated by the Royal Bank of Canada and Toronto Dominion, among others. The tar sands fields in the northwest Canada are the third largest known reserves of crude oil in the world. But extraction of these oils have caused widespread damage to ecosystems and forced indigenous communities from their homes. The UK. HSBC holding RBS NatWest, Barclays, Santander, the Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds Banking Group have invested £66 billion in oil, gas and coal extraction. An analysis of Europe's 20 largest banks in 2014 found that Barclays had the highest volume of high carbon loans as a proportion of its total lending of any of the banks, while Lloyds have the highest amount invested in high carbon equities. Denmark. Denske Bank and Nordea have invested over 40 million Danish crowns in companies that are expanding coal power plants. Coal power plants generally run for about 30 years, which means that we're binding us to fossil fuels for years into the future, which is directly against the goals of the Paris Agreement. A new report from Fair Finance Guide shows that banks invest nine times more in fossil fuels than they do in green projects. And this is true for Jyske Bank, Sydbank, Danske Bank and Nykredit. Nordea invest four times more in fossil fuels than in green projects. How to find a green bank. The first thing that I did was I searched online for green bank and then my country. That is a really, really neat way to find lots of articles and they usually have lists that mention different green banks and you can look into them individually. Another thing you can do is when you research, like for instance, how I did for this video, I found tons of reports that showed specifically for my country and other countries, which uh, companies, which banks were most likely to invest in fossil fuel projects and which banks in the past have invested in the most fossil fuels. And then you can pick a bank that is lower on the list if possible. You can also try and look for a bank that's completely off the list. In Denmark I found two different banks that were not only completely off the list, there are several banks that are off the list that are very mainstream and widely spread, like Spanor, um, but there were two banks that were just going the extra mile to be that extra level of sustainable that I just absolutely adore. And those were Oikas and Makua. And those banks are value-based, which means that they use their values as their main policy, which was super cool. That means, for instance, that they do not, first of all, support fossil fuel projects with their investments, that they create green funds that you can invest in, and that they do not offer loans for people who want to purchase a petrol car and do not loan companies money that invest in fossil fuels or are going to or are going to use petrol products stuff like that. I personally think those are really really cool and I've left links down below if you are interested in switching to one of those banks or generally finding out more but I think those two were worth a mention. Oh yeah and they also provide micro loans for small businesses affected by poverty just some of the green banks that I found for the United States include Connecticut Green Bank, NY Green Bank, California Lending for Energy and Environmental Needs, Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank, Montgomery County Green Bank, and Hawaii Green Energy Market Securization. Securization. And <laughs> some of the green banks for the UK includes Triodos Bank, the Cooperative Bank, Ecology Building Bank, 
Charity Bank and Reliance Bank. I also want to take a moment to talk about the future of fossil fuels investments for banks and just generally share some really cool perspectives and notions that I have found throughout my research. Because we have yet to see the fossil fuel industry engaging in this discussion about climate change, about their industry, about pollution in a constructive way, which is honestly really concerning. When the CEO of the Bank of England spoke out against fossil fuel brands and generally just opened up the discussion and the question of what will happen in the future with climate change. We don't know the full effects of how this will turn out. We don't know how the world will look like in 50 years. And we have just generally very, very little idea of what will both financially, but generally in the world, what will happen and how will the fossil fuel industry adapt, change or generally just respond to this. And the fossil fuel industry generally just replied with scorn and criticism towards his commentary. So that's all really constructive and great. I have, honestly guys, at this point, the bar is really, really low for the communication field in the fossil fuel industry. However, it is a really, really interesting question because more and more experts are telling different investors and banks to drop out of fossil fuel projects and funds because it's estimated that this field will drop $22 trillion in value over the course of the next 25 years. So I think it's a really, really important discussion to have. Furthermore, BlackRock, one of the largest investment management corporations in the world, estimate that more than 500 investment companies with stock worth more than 2.4 trillion dollars are slowly backing out of fossil fuel projects according to the economist i also found this amazing chart that has a list of many 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 banks from all around the world i will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out more closely but it shows how much money these respective banks have invested in fossil fuel companies from 2016 to 2019 and then you can see how the amount of money they have invested have grown or decreased and that is also something you can take into account when deciding on what bank you want to support do however have in mind that all of these numbers are in billions not millions <laughs> Oh, okay, how to change banks. First of all, when you are changing banks, if you are at the step where you are changing your bank, I think the most important thing to do, honestly, is tell your current bank or like your past bank why you switch and why you change. Don't walk out of there silently, not in a million years. If the reason why you're changing your bank is based on values, is based on environmentalism, and the cause of your change is their investments and their actions, then let them know. Communicate to them why you are leaving. Tell them that you do not appreciate how they are using your money and how they are investing as a company. Tell them that you disagree with how they spend their money and how they are investing in fossil fuel projects. I also saw in my last video about money and about changing banks and all this kind of stuff, there were some questions about how you physically change your bank. Luckily, most of it is actually happening online at this point. So it takes a phone call or an email from you to your bank and then you can set up a online like a email meeting with your new bank and they will honestly do most of the work because most banking today happens online. I guess all banking happens online. You don't even need your bank to be physical and need you. It can all happen online, which honestly makes it so much easier to change your banks and to use your money and your presence as a customer in a more sustainable way. There are also other things you can do before you change your bank, like going down there, like emailing them. When I say going down there, I obviously mean emailing them. Unless you want to go down there with a sign, like I won't be uh, opposed to it. Legal reasons, is this a joke? I don't know. But you can communicate to your bank that you do not want them to spend their funds on fossil fuel projects and that if they continue how they do it now, then you will have no choice but to change. It's a great idea to communicate with the companies with which we disagree and that goes for basically everything. But letting people know that what they are doing is specifically hurting their customer base is a really, really good idea because then you hit them where it hurts. There are also tons of petitions that you can sign that demand political action in this field because as of today there are very very few restrictions in place to make sure that banks put their money into good sustainable and responsible projects but it's very unregulated. So there are tons of petitions that push for more political action in every country and all over the world basically and if there isn't in your country then perhaps you could start one. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, you can leave me a comment down below. And if you have any questions about this, I would love to try and answer them. Remember, this is also a learning curve for me. And I have never really been interested in finance until I made my last video. And I think it's a really, really important subject, but please bear in mind that I am also learning. So if there's anything you thought I should know, then either uh, send me a DM with links or a comment down below. I would love to learn as well with you. Thank you so much for watching. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.